Derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Good morning. It is Thursday, April 25th. My name is John Piernunzi, and this is the opening swing. The opening swing is a brief game plan for active traders of the S&P 500 futures based on the most recent market generated information, potentially to soon add other products. Let's begin today as we always do with news. Out of Europe, very little, a consumer confidence survey, not a lot, not much else. The overnight action has been very slow, nothing really going on. Uh, coming into today, our 8.30 news drivers are GDP. We also have international trade, a little bit more minor, jobless claims, be attentive to that. Um, a little later, we have pending home sales at 10, all times in Eastern. And uh, beyond that, a regional Fed manufacturing survey, not a big deal, and a couple small auctions. So our primary news drivers at 8.30. A couple uh, a couple things. First of all, these videos are probably gonna come out right at 8.30. So you'll probably see them after the number, which is um, unfortunate, but it's just the way that we have to do it now. It takes a long time for these videos to upload. Um, and as well, um, I also want to mention, uh, yesterday, I feel like I missed, I feel like I missed yesterday. I was pretty bullish and I was not attentive enough to the ideas of where, uh, this prior month's low could just end up being a wall. And, uh, so I just wasn't attentive enough. And the reason that happened was I ended up doing most of my planning, you know, the prior night and I ended up getting, uh, fairly bullish. And then I wasn't unbiased enough yesterday morning and um that colored my expectations so that happened it happens sometimes um a lot of it's kind of I'm a little bit distracted trying to get these videos out but um just wasn't attentive enough to that so you know uh you know you can't be perfect every day so anyway that happened let's go on to today as we do so looking at the daily chart, I'm not going to go over everything on this again because we've kind of run over this ground. The important things to recognize here are we're starting to establish this as a range where we have a very clear area of resistance and we also have an area uh, that the buyers have claimed. So sellers have claimed up here, the buyers have claimed down here. And it's starting to be more of a range. This is our pro, our MC profile of the area. We can see that the VPOC of this area is right up here, controlled by the sellers. Um, we examined the possibility yesterday that this could be our April low. That's still a possibility. Um, we have four trading days left in April. So we have this range. The other thing that I will establish here, or just kind of flag, last few weeks, S&P 500, has been a marvelous trade. It's been amazing. We've had a lot of price discovery, real clear order flow, opportunity all day. And uh, now if we start to kind of like hang out in this range, we could see that kind of tighten. We could see ranges tighten. We could see the trade get a little bit tougher. So just be aware of that. Um, if we start to balance out in this area, that that's something that could happen where the trade could get a little bit more difficult, uh, a little bit harder to handicap. So we're, we're aware of that. Let's take a look. Uh, we're gonna skip the TPO again today. I'm having some issues with it loading. So we're gonna go to a P and F chart, a higher time frame. I'll pause and get that ready. Okay, here we have, this is a four by 10 P and F chart showing our range that we've traded in. What I wanna show here is the price action and some important areas. On the impulse lower, we hit into this, uh, this was basically like a bid and the sellers pounded into it, buyers tried to hold and then we eventually cracked it lower. And to me, this is looking like support ahead of the 50-50 strike price. So we hit into that support, sellers kept pounding and then on the news we released lower. This was overnight. So what I'm looking at here, first of all, this area in rust is the last real fight before we got the drop. And then this low was not retested. This was overnight, but there was, there was not a lot of paper bids sitting in here. So that opens me up to the possibility 
it's speculation, but the possibility that when we found our buyers here, there's potentially new buyers. So if that happens, if this, we had this fight, then a drop with nothing, and then if it, this is in fact new buyers, then I'm gonna be a little bit more attentive to this rust colored area because if we break this rust colored area, it would start to pressure anyone who tried the long in here. And that would put this low, uh, this low would become, oops, that's not what I'm looking to do. This low would become a lot more vulnerable. It's the 6375s. Um, so the more time and energy we would spend below this rust colored area, in my opinion, would start to undermine the idea that this low could hold. Uh, this is also the 50% line of this balance. This is the midpoint of this balance. This white line is a anchored VWAP from the beginning of this. And this red line is an anchored VWAP from the low. And we see that we are right on top of it. Let's look at the eight box and discuss some potential price action. I'll pause. Okay, so this is our, P, our eight box PNF chart. This is our overnight range, very tight, only about 15 points. My key target for, for any downside is the 37 halves, which are singles left from Tuesday. The next important price is the 50s. Above, I'm looking at the 90s as an important area, and I'm looking at prior settle. Beyond prior settle, we have these highs. Then above these highs, we have yesterday's high and our key area, which is the prior month's high. So let's look at how this could be bullish first. <clears throat> first off, the first way that this could be bullish as always is if this overnight low is respected. We see that we made a low, we made a low, we made a lower low, and as of now, we're not retesting. But this is super, super choppy. So anyway, the first and kind of the cleanest way that this could happen is if this overnight low holds, and then we see something like on the open, just a push higher above this area, taking the overnight high. And then in, in perfect situation, we get a retest into this area and then a continuation. That would be perfect. Although it may just push above, hold and continue. And then we might get the, the pullback might happen after the 90s if we get one. But anyway, the key to to one way this could happen is if this overnight low holds, we get an immediate push higher that respects uh, FS levels and likely the, the full session VPOC and starts to work higher. We get into these 90s and then the next area of interest is obviously the key target, which would be settlement. A couple of things about this, if we get this idea. Number one, this could be a test. This could be a test that is not totally bullish, you know, because what could happen after this is we could just fail lower and start going. So we're open to that. If that, that's the, mo that's the first most bullish idea is this holds, breaks above, potentially retests, continues, settlement would be the target. Now, because this would still be holding lower highs and kind of continuing this trend, if I'm on this trade, I may get out ahead of settlement anticipating that this could be an area where where we fall over but we'll continue with the bullish idea for now but note that this is the key test area so if we test that area and then we actually get above and we start holding test lower can't get back below it kind of buoys back up and we get these highs and we start getting these highs and continue to hold settlement then that puts yesterday's high and the major level in jeopardy in which case that would be the next target, but we know there's resistance there. So, you know, this is the key area. If we get up to here, it starts to increase odds that we might push, but we could also easily just end up getting a slightly higher high and roll over again. That would be contextual. And that's a, that's a pretty far excursion from where we're at now. So I don't want to speculate too much. This is the target. This would be an extended target. This is the intermediate target. So what's the other way that this could happen? Another bullish way. So another key way is, like I said, the 50s are important to me. So if we instead get any type of an initial push lower, that's just like a, you know, a puke, puke lower, that kind of goes and then once again, just reverts higher above the overnight range. 
this would have to be like some type of quick test rejected and then reverts above the overnight range above full session levels and then above this area if then it's game on again for a test of the 90s and potentially settle if we get a quick test rejection key to that and i'll discuss this a little bit more if on any tests if we get the test below and then above then this area still remains important to me as a test below and then to hold but anyway those are the two bullish ideas bullish idea one we hold this overnight low and float up get to the 90s hold continue for settle settle we don't know it could we could continue we could or we could fail bullish idea two is a test below that is rejected ideally with an impulse back above fs levels and the overnight vpoc that continues then we're again looking for 90s and potentially settle or just above those are our bullish ideas Let's talk about bearish ideas. Pretty much the mirror image, to be honest with you. Just looking for another target. Same thing, exact same thing. We could see this happen just with the offer sort of stack up and we could just fall lower and get the 50 test. In which case, if we get that again, if we move out of this area, then I'm looking to see what happens on retests. Fall out of this area, retests, if we retest, we can't get anywhere, then I'm looking for potentially extension to key target 37s. Obviously, this could just flip into the other idea. That's why I'm this sort of the VPOC of this area is important. Now, the other way that this could happen, obviously, is the same thing. I look at this, this area is important to me. So if we get something that looks like a test, gets up here, maybe attempts the 90s, maybe doesn't even get this high and then falls back, retests and can't, then this area is a lean for me, just the same as it would be on the other in, on the other side. That area becomes a lean to me where the sellers have shown that they, have contr they control it, I can trade against it short. So that's the other way, test, rejection, this area is respected, we continue, take the 58s, take the 50s, potentially some kind of a pullback in this area and then a take of the 37s which would be the key target uh at that point we could easily revert but anyway <clears throat> this would be the key target for me on the downside then uh with any kind of a push below this uh the big key target below and it's a lot further but the big key target below this we would be aware of is the uh 5000s that area is super key that would be a lot of excursion from where we are now, so I'm not really expecting it today, but it could happen. Um, anyway, so, and then of course, we also are aware of the possibility that we could see something that looks like this goes up and we're like, oh, is it gonna hold? And it doesn't, then it falls. And we're like, okay, it's gonna go bearish. And it goes, it doesn't really do anything there. This would be an environment that I would stay out of if we see a test failure and there's no respect for this area. Because I'm looking for this to be an area where the institutions have said something that I can trade against. But if we're just going back and forth over it, it's going to be a very difficult trade and I'll probably stay out. So, okay, there. Got this done a little quicker today. I think I was fairly complete. We're, um, I'm really keying off of this overnight range and how we treat this balance. Do we move directionally from it? If so, it, it's tradable. If we don't, if we chop around it, it will probably be a very difficult trade that you might want to be a little bit more conservative with. Um, that's what I'm seeing today as of now. I hope this is beneficial to you. I hope you have a great day today, I, I, and I hope you can be a little better than yesterday. Have a happy day, and I hope, of course, you can make somebody else's day happy, because that's really the key to, uh, to doing well each day. So I wish you the best. See you tomorrow.